soul. Say it again. Say it again. Come on. I love it. Okay. All right. I got some cheering. That means that not everybody is like, nope, you're not talking to me. You haven't seen my life. You didn't see what I just came out of, the insanity. Don't you call me invincible. I'm going to. I'm going to. And I'm going to call you all the rest of the night the same thing because there is something that is so, so important about us as women getting this. I think sometimes we feel in our lives like this little guy up here on the screen. We've got a video for you of a wonderful little guy in a diaper, okay? Sometimes we feel like this guy. We're like, God asked us to do something. I'm going to try it. Nope. No. No. I didn't get it. No. Nope. I'm done. I'm done. There we go. Now I'm going to stand on my face. Sometimes we step up to the plate of whatever it is that God says you are or whatever it is that God places in your hands to do. And we say, okay, I'll try it, Lord. I can try it. No, I failed. Okay, I'm going to try it again. I failed again. Forget it. Forget it. I quit. I can't do this. I'm going to stand on my head in the corner. I hope none of you are standing on your head because I can't stand on my head. There's way too much blood that flows to the, the head, right? Can't do that. But I think sometimes we also feel like this woman up here in this wonderful picture here where she says, um, personally, I wouldn't mind being replaced by a robot. <laughs> right? Some of you are like, there was a deeper amen from some of you in the room. She's just minding her business, making some eggs and bacon. And she's like, it would be just fine if a robot took me over tonight. I would be fine. Because the truth is being a woman is hard. Being a woman is hard. There, that's good. That's good. I like the agreement. Some of y'all are like, I don't want to talk about the hard stuff. Nope, nope, no. It's, well, let's talk about it. Being a woman is hard. There are so many expectations placed upon us as women. There are so many different directions we are being pulled and pushed. I see some pregnant ladies in the house. There is literally so much expected of us. Amen? So much that is expected of us. And ladies, oh, we really do just want to have fun, right? We just want to have fun. We just want to enjoy life. We just want to celebrate people. We want to do all of the fun stuff. But we also want to be heard in the middle of it. We want to be supported in the middle of it, but sometimes that just doesn't happen, does it? It doesn't. I want, to, I want to pause right there just for a moment. As women, we don't often get to hear the words, thank you. And I just want to, I feel like I really need to just stop and say, thank you. I'm going to look in your eyes for a moment and say, thank you. If you have not heard thank you, for all that you do, all that you've done, all that you've invested, hear it from me, and please hear the Lord God Almighty speaking job well done to you. In this moment, I will drop it down to a serious moment just to say, we all need to receive appreciation, and I appreciate you. Look in the eyes of the lady next to you and say, you're doing great. You're doing great. I love it. You guys can't not giggle. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the hard work that is required out of us as women, though, makes believing in our strength even harder, right? The way that we're pulled and pushed and tugged on and unappreciated and sometimes left bleeding with nobody there to pick up. Sometimes it makes it really difficult for us to repeat that. I'm invincible. And for you to really believe it, you know who you are. There is a whole lot of us. There are a whole lot of us in this room that when I said, say this, say this with me, you were like, I'm invincible. <laughs> That's nice. She's invincible, but I'm not. I believe, I believe so many of us believe that other people might have it because we doubt our own strength in the midst of the chaos. But tonight, my goal is to convince you of a whole different truth than what you are naturally inclined to believe. Because ladies, when we walk in it, when we believe it, we walk in it differently. You know somebody that walks in an understanding of their strength, right? Amazingly, it's my seven-year-old Daphne. Amazingly. She is so, I say so girly, but I don't know if, she just likes lip gloss. She's that little girl that's like, I've got 20 different kinds of lip glosses because everybody keeps giving them to me. She, that little girl had a Fenty lip gloss, and I'm like, who gave you that? 
I am not replacing that, just so you know. And she comes and she sits next to me when I'm putting on my makeup and she's like, can I get some of that? And I'm like, no, you cannot, you are seven. Some of you are like, just put it on her mom. Nope, nope, she's not getting any of it. She's my youngest girl and she is so tiny. She was born a whole month early. She's always been so little, but now she's losing all her teeth and those big ones are coming in. She's getting taller and I'm like, stop it. You stop it right now. But the amazing thing about Daphne, if you have ever had the experience of walking behind Daphne, you would recognize that that little girl walks with a confidence I've never seen in a grown woman before. And she doesn't even know it. She's got like her legs crossed in front of the other one, like a model does. And then she's got a full like sway, but I mean, you can watch me. She does this as she walks. And I'm not exaggerating. That is the way my little Daphne walks. And I literally, we laugh at her and she's like, what, what? She doesn't know she does it. She hasn't modeled after everybody. You guys have seen me walk. You're lucky I'm in heels. She just does it all on her own. And the amazing thing about it is whenever she walks, we follow because she's so confident that we're like, Daphne knows where she's going because she's just <laughs> sauntering her way through life. Life is leisurely at Daphne's pace, but it is true. When you believe in your strengths, you walk differently. You walk differently. Tonight, ladies, I want you walking out saying, you know what? You know what? I am invincible. I am invincible. I want you to write it in your notes if you have not yet written it. I am invincible. Because the truth is, there is and will be a moment that may rob your joy for a moment. There's definitely gonna be a moment, or two, or three. Anybody had a couple of those? It's gonna be a moment. There is gonna be a situation or a couple that in that situation are gonna steal your peace. It's gonna happen. You're probably gonna encounter a person, maybe two people, that unleash a little bit of pain in your life. That's probably gonna happen. But let me be really, really, really clear when I say that there is no scenario nor human in this world that can change who we are in Christ, ladies. Not one. And these nights are for you to gather together and remember that. These nights are for you to be able to sit in that seat, breathe in deep, shake your shoulders and say, God, Whatever it is that you have for me, actually right now, right at your seat, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to shake those shoulders. Not for anybody else, just shake them, it's just for you. And I want you to say, God, whatever it is I need in this moment, fill me up, Lord. Because that is what we are doing here in this place, is we are pausing and reconnecting with the heart of God right here, right now, so that you have everything that you need for the mission that lays out in front of you. Because it's a big one, women. We are invincible, but catch this, it's because of Jesus. We are invincible, not in our own strength, ladies. You will come to the edge of your sanity, I promise you. You will come to the end of your strength, but you will never come to the end of Jesus. Never, never. We are invincible because of Jesus, and I'm gonna prove it. Are you ready? I want you to yell, prove it. There you go. I want you to prove it like you don't have men sitting next to you, and you're like, I don't want them to think I'm crazy, so I'm gonna say it like, prove it. I want you to yell it like, prove it. I like that. I like that. All right, so number one. The most important thing that I want you to get from tonight, number one, you are invincible when you're sensitive. You're invincible when you're sensitive. Now, I think some of you are like, wait a minute, what? Well, that, that sounds a little confusing to me. You're telling me that I'm real strong when I'm real tender? What, those things don't seem to go together, right? Some of you are like, wait, wait, okay. So my ability to listen and feel led by God, that kind of sensitivity is what you're talking about, right? And then others of you are like, um, are you talking about my tendency to get my feelings hurt and make you regret meeting me kind of sensitivity? <laughs> you know who you are. I know the difference. 
You ladies are asking two different questions and I want you to realize tonight that you are both right. I am talking about you are invincible in both of those kinds of sensitivities because they both come from the divine design of God that allows us to feel and sense deeply. Anybody know what I mean when I'm talking about feeling deeply? Yeah, you're women. You can say, I do, I do. Everybody else says I do, but right now I'll admit it. The rest of the time I say, what are you talking about? I'm not being sensitive. But right now you can admit it. We all know that the sensitivity to God is a good thing, right? That's a sensitivity that oh, he wants us all to have. There is a sensitivity to God that is so, so important and so valuable. But most people believe that our sensitivity as women is what makes us unstable. If I had a penny for every time I heard a woman called crazy, I would be a millionaire. And some of y'all ladies are living up to that. <laughs> we women, we can, we can, you toe the line a little bit. We border it, we kind of straddle it a little bit, but I'm telling you that there is great strength in it, okay? And I'm going to contradict that thought that sensitivity makes us unstable. Why? Because sensitivity is a gift. And I want you ladies to get it more than anything else that your sensitivity is a gift when it is used for good and not for evil. Amen. I love the little picture of the little, little angel on the one shoulder, right? And then the little devil on the other one. That is literally when we are sensitive to the things of God for the purposes of God, not for our own selfish gains, then we are functioning in the sensitivity that God called us to. But I want to give you an example here, and this is a hard example, so just go with me. I'm going to give you the example of the Trinity, okay? I know, some of you are right over my head already, quick, too fast. So we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit, right? The Father represents, he is the redemption maker. He created it. The Son is the redemption, okay? And the Holy Spirit is literally the person of the Trinity that causes the willingness within us to receive that redemption. Those three people in one God. So ladies, what I just said is that the Holy Spirit is the sensitivity of God's heart. That is why you hear husbands sometimes say, she's the Holy Spirit. They're joking, because the Holy Spirit's the Holy Spirit. However, it is the nature of God that is the sensitivity. That is literally one whole part of God's nature is sensitivity. And what we have to realize in that is that we have a direct line to God as daughters. If you have daughters, and you have a husband, you realize that there is a difference when a daughter asks for something than when a son asks for something. Bless those sons' hearts with their dads. They bring them to mom. But when a daughter comes to her dad and says, hey dad, I need this, I need this, there is a different connection heart to heart. And dads will move heaven and earth to do whatever it is that their daughters need. Sometimes at the ill advice of mom, but... You have a direct connection to the heart of God. Why? Why? Because that sensitivity within you was intended for you to be connected to God's heart. You got a double portion, ladies. This is why sensitivity is a gift. This is why we do not look at our sensitivity and say, dang it, get yourself together. This is why we say, Lord, you gave me a double portion. So why? Every single thing that you are as a woman was designed with great purpose and that was to connect you to God's heart so that you could then be connected to people's hearts and share the love of God. Y'all can clap. But in order to share God's heart, you have to be connected with his heart. That is the part that sometimes we miss. Everything that you are, everything that you are as a woman was designed with great purpose. You were designed to be gracious. I bet nobody told you that before. You're supposed to have grace, right? Some of y'all, I've met so many women before and they're like, that's just not my strength. Grace isn't my strength. 
You are designed to be gracious, ladies. You just have to press in deeper into the Lord to receive that grace. You were designed to be kind. How many of you are like, sometimes? Yeah. You are designed to be nurturing. That is why even when you don't find yourself to be a great nurturer, you literally run to the scene of accidents to take care of people. This is women. This is women. You were designed to be sensitive and tender at the same time as incredibly strong. You were designed for that, the divine design of God. You were designed to be long-suffering. That means patient. Y'all have heard my wonderful helium story from Pastor Daniel before, but because this is so many of your first time to a ladies' night, I will retell it. But there was this one particular um, there was this one particular conference that he and I were, were preaching together at, and this was before we had kiddos. I was very pregnant with our first child. Keep that point in mind, because it's really, really important to the story. I was very pregnant, like uncomfortably pregnant, like past the point of people saying, oh, you're so cute. I was past that. I was on the other side of it. And we're at this workshop, and we are uh, standing together, and I'm standing next to him like I am a lot of the time, and he was talking. And he's telling how our personalities are so similar. We're very similar in personality. We're just a little different in nature. Really, he's a man, I'm a woman. So that makes us a little different, right? There's a good, nice difference there. And he's talking about how essentially he can be a little sporadic and I stabilize him. I keep him a little stable. And so in this moment, he says, you know, I'm like a helium balloon and she's like the weight that holds me down. At that moment, we lost the room. He had nothing more that was significant to say because everyone was like, oh, no, she's not. We're going to hold you down in a minute. And it wasn't even all women. Even the men were like, nobody, we're sorry. We can't support you in this one. And he quickly said, no, 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 you know what I mean? You know what I mean? She, she stabilizes me. But the, it was done. The damage was done. But in that moment, I took back in my mind the thoughts of I'm supposed to be long-suffering. I'm supposed to be patient, right, Lord? This is important. And I was because he did his own damage in that moment. I didn't need to punish him. But we are called. We were designed to be long-suffering. We were designed for this thing of patience that is so hard, right? Oh, my goodness. It is very, very hard. We were designed to be wise, to be brilliant, to be life-producing we were designed to be very different from our brothers in Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? That description that I just gave you, yes, yes, they are called to have a portion of it, but ladies, we are called to a double portion of it because we are the sensitive beings out of men and women. And all that that I just described to you is by design the definition of invincibility. Amen? Amen. When you think about all of that put together, that makes you pretty darn invincible, right? There is no doubting that. But these are the very things that the enemy attacks within you. Those are the very things. Think back to that list that I talked about. The enemy comes for your grace almost daily, doesn't he? Almost daily, the enemy wants to remind you about all the times that you gave grace and it did not work out in your favor, did it? The enemy comes continually for your nurturing spirit, doesn't he? Because he likes to remind you that the last time you chose to comfort somebody else, they cut you and they blamed you for getting cut, right? And he reminds you of the pain that it caused. And every single time he does that, every single time we question, I don't know if I could do that again, Lord. And we look like that little boy in the diaper, even though it's a little more understandable for us as women. And we literally, every time we feel him coming for each of these, he comes for our kindness. And the way that he does it is he reminds us of all the times that we did not have enough to change the situation. This is what the enemy does. Because what does John 10, 10 say, ladies? It says the thief comes only to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then I love this. And there's a wonderful but that comes in there. But what did Jesus say? He said, but I have come that you may have life and that you may have it to an abundance, that you may walk in health, that you may walk in a wholeness, that you may be set free from those things that once bound you. But 
I have come for that. There will be moments where the enemy comes for you, but I have come to give you strength in the midst of it. One of my very, my favorite scriptures is in Proverbs 31, where it's talking about that Proverbs 31 woman, but my, my favorite part is verse 25. Verse 25 says, she is clothed with what? With strength and with dignity. Ladies, those two things are pretty much on opposite ends of the spectrum because we've got strength and we've got grace down here. So it is essentially the same thing as me saying, you are invincible when you are sensitive. This is what the word is saying here. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days to come. She can laugh when she sees the enemy coming for her because she knows the butt that follows. She knows the fullness that she has to live in. And she's got some sisters to remind her of that strength when she needs it. That's the beauty of us as a collective. We remind one another what the word says, not what somebody who's coming after us says about us. Women of God remind one another who God says you are. We pull one another up and we say, that's okay. That's okay because our God is bigger than what that other person is saying. And ladies, can I just encourage you, please, please don't be a woman that tears down other women. Please, 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 please. If you have an issue with your sister, go to her, okay? Your social media is an ugly place to be talking about other ladies. There is nobody like another lady that understands you and what happens in your head and in your heart, so why on earth would we tear them down? If your sister is winning, guess who's winning? You're winning. You are winning. You are winning. Proverbs 31, 25, she's clothed with strength and with dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. All of those words are faith and identity and wholeness. We as women of God are called to be whole and healthy and strong and tender at the same time. Because ladies, there is a sensitivity that is required to balance strength and tenderness. There's a sensitivity in that. So am I calling you sensitive? You bet. I am. Am I calling you emotional? I am, and you are welcome. I am acknowledging the gifting of God inside of you, and I am saying, pull it out and let him have it. Because on your own, we get messy. But when we recognize that God put it in there for a purpose, as long as we don't take that and run with it and try to identify what that purpose is, as long as we take it and we give it to God and we say, you put something beautiful in me and I don't always understand it, but help me to know what to do with it. There is great strength in that. Are you gonna get those emotions right every single time? No way, no, you're not, and that is okay. But did God design us with a higher emotional capacity? He sure did. I have felt so strongly that the emotions and the sensitivity of the daughters of God should not be something that we feel shame over, but instead it should be something that is embraced within us as women and that we allow the Almighty to refine it every single day instead of trying to hide it, instead of trying to suppress it, work around it, because it connects us, ladies, to the heart of God. And the solution for so many generations for the sensitivity within us, for these emotions that we feel, the solution for so many generations, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, has been to just be less sensitive, feel less. You're overwhelmed by things, stop feeling it. You have a voice that you wanna speak, don't speak, be quiet. You feel an opinion in that moment, it's better if you just suppress that. And for generation after generation after generation, women have felt that they needed to just zip it. You feel something from the Lord, let a man say it. That's not the heart of God. It's not even biblical. That's not what the word of God says at all. 
that is something that I am here to challenge in its own theology. Because ladies, if you look at the word of God, there is a large portion of, portion, per, portion of the word that is an instruction manual detailing how to be sensitive in the right way. The word talks in so many different places about sensitivity and how to do it in the right way. Look with me at Lamentations 3, 22. It says, the Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease for his compassions never fail. Loving kindnesses and compassions, that is sensitivity, right? If we go on to John chapter 11, verses 33 to 35, it says, when Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Anybody ever had a deep anger well up within you? And then, you know, you know, whatever happened next, I apologize for that. But Jesus was deeply troubled, right? And he asks, where have you put him? And they told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. People repeat this this scripture a lot, you know, when people say, what scripture do you know? And they're like, Jesus wept. But the importance of this scripture here is not that it says that Jesus shed a single tear. It doesn't say Jesus was, his eyes got a little red and, you know, you saw a little bit of moisture in the corner of his eye. You know, the thing we look for when we're trying to decide if somebody is really sincerely being emotional. I know, I know. No, it says Jesus wept. It says that he cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. He was deeply emotional here. You cannot deny to me that that is a depth of emotion listed right here by the Messiah himself. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. What that means is the great comforter place comfort upon your life so that you would receive it from God with great tenderness and share that same tenderness. Ladies, this word is full of tenderness. Matter of fact, Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind to one another and tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. It is a literal instruction. And this instruction is for the whole body of believers. But how many of you can recognize in this moment that we were instructed to do something that God already graced us with a double portion to do? This is a strength of ours, lady. It's not a weakness. Your sensitivity is not a weakness of yours. Your tenderness is not a weakness of yours. And I would challenge you, if you sit here today and you say, I'm not very tender, then I would ask you to reveal from the Holy Spirit within your own mind what areas need healing. Because our own brokenness will keep us from tenderness when we allow those walls to get so high that even the the Lord Almighty can't even get in them. And it is so important. Romans 12, 15 says, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Again, two great different depths of emotion. Rejoicing is the fullest level of celebration and weeping is the greatest depth of mourning. We are called to be able to practice and understand both of them by the grace of God. Ladies, less sensitivity is not God's way. It's not God's way. Our sensitive hearts have so much to do with our sensitivity to the Spirit of God. And we have a double portion of sensitivity. So what does that mean? That means we have a close ear to the heart of God. What does that mean? That means that God can whisper even the strongest, most miraculous utterances to you and deliver them to people through you. If you choose to listen. If you choose to stay sensitive to his heart. If you choose to stay connected. Ladies, don't allow the enemy to rob your Design. It is a divine design and it is very much on purpose. And there is great beauty in that strength of woman. It cannot be copied. It is original by the hand of God placed within you. And 
it is ours to embrace. You will be unstoppable as a woman of grace and kindness when you stay sensitive to the Spirit of God. And you don't become hard and you don't become bitter because of all the things you've been through and you don't wall off parts of your life because he wants you sensitive. Amen? You are invincible when you're sensitive. Say, I am sensitive and I'm proud of it. All right, number two. You are invincible when you are willing. You are invincible when you're willing. Isaiah 119 says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That means if you're willing, you get all the cheesecake, all the chocolate, all the fried ice cream. You get all those things, right? I mean, not technically, okay? You can do whatever you want with your own life. I'm not your mom. However, the Lord is literally saying here that when you are willing, there's great blessing. There is great blessing for you. You get the good things in life. You're gonna have to filter through some silly stuff, but that is the beauty of trusting in God. That is the beauty of giving things to the Lord because there is great blessing for you because your willingness is a demonstration of your trust in the Lord. Your willingness to say, God, here I am. I see what you've made. Sometimes I understand it. Sometimes I don't. But I trust you with it. I trust you with the journey. I trust you with the process. I trust you, God. God can do anything through the one that is willing to be used. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. And I love the way that the New Living Translation says this last part. It says, Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. It's like our own little internal GPS system. We know how to skip the accidents. We know how to get around all the construction. We know how to bypass any roads closed, right? By the voice of God, when we are willing and obedient to follow him. So often, it's okay, you can clap. So often it's in those moments that we just go our own route. We go our own way. That one was too hard, so I quit. I'm going back this way. Those people were mean, Lord. I'm not going over there anymore. And God is saying, hey, 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 hey. If you trust me and you don't trust your own understanding of your situation and you don't look to everything that makes sense in your own mind, but you give it to me and you listen to my voice, I will show you the way to go. I'll tell you which road to turn down. I'll tell you which relationship to stick near. I will tell you when you are not to nurture that person. Stop it. God will tell you specifically, but you have to use the sensitivity within you to stay connected to his heart. You must, because we are by design, that design that I talked to you about, about who we are created to be as women, we are design willing. We are willing, God. There's a grace upon us to do whatever it is that you place upon us. There is a desire to please you as our Father above everything else. But hear me, ladies, that's by design, by God's design, by brokenness. We are very unwilling. In brokenness, there is a massive unwillingness within us. And again, this is where I would challenge you to look at your own life and say, God, am I willing? Have I been willing? Or have I said, I'm staying here, I'm not going anyplace else, I'm not doing another thing, and you'd have to give me an audible sign, let the roof lift off before I would move anywhere. If that is your posture, which we have all been there, no judgment. If that is your posture, again, I would ask you to say, Lord, I think there might be a little brokenness within me. I think there might be something that is not entirely healed within me. And I am not yet trusting you with the entirety of who you've called me to be in willingness there is invincibility because willingness allows us to get better. Proverbs 9, 9 says, instruct the wise and they will be even what? Even wiser. And it says, teach the righteous and they will learn even more. 
That means we can be really great. Like life can be great. And you can still say, God, I'm willing, whatever it is. And God will make you even wiser. And that means that those that are really, really smart, they give it all over to the Lord. And they say, God, do with it as you will. You made it anyways. Why am I trying to write a story that I never even saw the beginning of? You ever, you ever been around a person that jumps into your story and uh, you're, you're trying to tell them some details about something and they jump in and they, they're like, oh yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, no. Were you there? You, hang on. I have details. Ladies, God's got details. And you're jumping into God's story by trying to figure it all out. You weren't there, but you're here now. And what he wants from you is a heart that is so willing that says, God, if you want me to traverse that mountain, I'll do it. Because what I know is that you'll move the mountain or you'll get me over it. One way or another, that mountain's not a problem. One way or another, that mountain will not take me out because I know what your word says. That when we are willing, there is Growth for us. Growth that is so unexpected, that is so unprecedented. Growth that is beyond our wildest dreams. When we are willing, there is an anointing that grows daily, ladies. An anointing to say, okay, God, you asked me. I'm gonna lay hands on this woman and I'm gonna see her delivered from sickness. I'm gonna speak a word of courage to this woman and she will be healed. She will be made whole. If you are willing, your life can reflect the heart of God. I don't ever want my life to reflect the heart of Jackie because there are moments when that heart is quite ugly. There are moments when that heart is just me. There are moments when I am only all I bring to the table, but I want to reflect the heart of God. I want to reveal to another person the miraculousness of the Father that hand knit them and said it doesn't matter where you came from, it matters where I'm taking you. I wanna reveal that heart. There are miracles, there are signs, and there are wonders when we are willing, ladies. And all we have to do is say, God, you can have my heart, you can have my life, I'm willing, I'm willing. And number three, you are invincible when you release. You are invincible when you release. Life is full of so many celebrations and so many joys and so many fun and wonderful things. But it is also a little full of hard things, challenges, hurts, heartbreaks. And unfortunately, we tend to remember those a little bit more because the enemy always loves to remind us of them, doesn't he? It's like a continual recorder of the things you hate the most, continually playing, and the enemy wants our minds to be stuck in the pain. But when we release those, God can turn our story of pain into a story of power and perseverance when you release those to the Father. Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That means he is a God that says, I know you will get worn out. I know you will feel weak, but come to me. I've got everything that you need to be filled up. I have everything that you need for the joy for tomorrow. I have everything that you need to overcome what you are facing right now. Because ladies, I am as aware as I can be that you all are walking through things right now. You're finding joy in today and trusting God right now. And that is the beauty of releasing it. Because failures and shame and guilt, those are all opportunities for God to pull a miraculous testimony out of your life. They are all opportunities. And we're not gonna get it right all the time, ladies. We're not, we're not gonna get it right. That sweet little seven-year-old Daphne, she came into my room a few months ago. I'm always on her about keeping her room clean. She came into my room and she said, mom, can I ask you a question? And I said, of course, honey, because she's like a little Disney princess. So I talk to her like one. I'm like, of course, darling, what is it? She's like, well, 
Why do you always ask me to keep my room clean when your room's really not clean? And I said, get out of my messy room right now. It's all your fault. I don't have time to clean my own room. No, we all mess up. We're all going to mess up at times. And that is why it is so important that we learn to release the disappointment and the pain to the Lord so that you don't become hardened, so that you don't lose your sensitivity. Because ladies, you need it to trust him that he's going to work all things for your good. It's going to work all things. You are invincible. Say it out loud with me again. I am invincible. But you have to stay sensitive. You have to stay sensitive. And you have to be willing. And you cannot hold on to the hurt. But you better hold on to Jesus real, real tight. Every single day. Would you ladies stand to your feet with me? I want to pray for you ladies. And I want to pray for those three things. And we have all kinds of fun that's waiting, but I know that God has something to deliver to you all right here and right now. So I, would you just close your eyes for a moment with nobody moving around, nobody looking around. I want to I wanna think about those last three things that I said. You have to be sensitive, you have to be willing, and you have to be able to let go of the hurt. I want to pray for, for all of you ladies here, just for a moment. But I would ask that if you, are, if you are challenged by that sensitive thing, would you just lift your hands to the Lord? If you are challenged from the Lord tonight to say, God, I need more sensitivity to you. I need to know how to, how to balance this sensitivity right here, right now. And the second thing, if you would say, Lord, I need more willingness. God, I have found myself to be quite unwilling and I need you, I need you to move on my heart right now. And lastly, if there is some pain, if there's some heartbreak, if there is some healing that you recognize, God, I need some healing, would you just lift up your hands right here, right where you are? God, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would rest on every single woman that has her hands lifted, God. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would deliver your sensitive spirit, God. Take off all the layers of pain, Lord. Take off all the walls. Take off all of the baggage and allow them to draw nearer to you right now, God. Let there be a willingness to put themselves out on the ledge and trust that you will catch them, Lord. And I ask you, Father, that you would just be peace in their lives. Be peace in their lives right now. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, ladies, and open your eyes for me. I want you to put your hand around a lady next to you if she had her hand lifted. I don't know if you've noticed yet, but you're all locking arms. The enemy wants you to believe you're the only one going through it. And he wants you to believe that there's nobody there that will stand with you. Look to your right and look to your left. You do not know, how, you don't have to know her history or her story, but she is standing with you right now. If you put yourself in a position to be surrounded by women of God and women of faith that will lift up your arms. Right now, she's holding up your arms. And for those of you that have been hurt by women, I ask for a special touch of God right now. I ask you for your healing to be delivered to them right now, Father. And I ask you that hearts would be restored and trust would be regained, not in people, but in you. I thank you, Father, that every time someone or something comes against them, you remind them that you will come at that thing with 10 times the fury and 10 times the fire because this is your daughter that we're talking about. Stand in that confidence, ladies. Amen? Can we do that tonight? Can we stand in that kind of confidence?
All right, I have one more prayer. One more prayer. And if you would all just close your eyes and bow your head, we cannot leave a room ever without inviting someone to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So ladies, if you are in this place and you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, or if you are in this place and you have been running from him as your savior, I would ask you right now, if you are one of either of those, if you would say tonight has reminded me that I need to surrender my life to this Jesus so that I can understand the sensitivity that he's placed within me and know how to live a life that is full of peace, full of freedom, full of faith, or if you would say, I have been so far from the feet of Jesus. Ladies, I would love to encourage you that the word says that all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you will be saved. So if you are either of those two women right now, would you just lift your hands up all across the room? If you are the first woman, I see you right there. I see you right there. If you would love to give your life to the Lord, I see you back there. I see you over there. I see you over there. Can we celebrate louder than that, ladies? Come on. Come on. If you didn't raise your hand, that is okay. And if you did raise your hand, we are all gonna say a prayer of repentance and salvation with you. So would you all close your eyes and say this with me? Say, dear Jesus, tonight is my night of salvation. Tonight, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of the sin that I have chosen. And I choose Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all pray. Amen, amen.